Welcome to another episode of The Real Bar Podcast, bringing you the realest updates on everything from working out, healthy lifestyles, day-to-day struggles, and life experiences. This is The Real Bar Podcast. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to The Real Bar Podcast. I'm your host, Mason Hurston. I don't know what episode this will be, but um, I'm here with Cook and Eichner, two of my boys and longtime friends. What's up, guys? What's up, man? Thanks for having us. No problem. What's up, bro? I agree. Thanks for having us. You agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Um, all right, so let's just start there. You guys are fucking longtime friends. You guys have known each other since you were kids. How did that happen? Was it like a family thing or just like you guys met playing sports? What's up? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time. I'm not sure if I actually know the story, if our parents knew each other much before, but I think it's mostly because we have really similar interests. I mean, we both play the same sports. We're both... Uh, pretty competitive so i think from a young age we were taking the sports pretty seriously yeah and i think for that reason we kind of gravitated toward each other i don't know what you think jeff I like, yeah, yeah you i think? mean i feel like uh like ever since i can remember you know it was always our two moms and us like always doing stuff vacationing i'm not actually sure how if i'm, I'm sure they're probably friends maybe prior to us playing sports together but i think that's where it really took off and that's where the relationships come from. Where it's you guys will both say mostly it generated either from your families or your sports. Somehow, yeah, some way that sure. all yeah. interconnected, right? That's kind of yeah, the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, for good. sure. And there's a lot of people I played sports with when I was younger, uh-huh. obviously. But I think I think we were raised similarly, and our parents had similar approaches. And that led to us acting similarly when we were together and not necessarily with our parents. Where? So it was pretty natural, honestly. Kind of Like I said, or like Jeff said. As for as long as I can remember, it's always been our yeah. two families together. I feel that. Um, so how do you think, and this is just like a selfish sort of question, how do you think I got into that mix? Because, I mean, we're all boys. Me and Cook are really close. Me and you have been getting closer recently, but we've always been boys. How did I, like, kind of get in there? I have my own story, but what do you guys think? Like, where did where did our friendship come from? I'll, I'll go first. Uh, I always remember, obviously, like, you played basketball as a kid and Stan Evans and AAU and all through that. I think that's where – or we went to – you didn't go to Dunty, did you? Fuck no. Okay, yeah. well, that's you right. ended up moving, what, 12, 13 over to where, across yeah, the street, Laurel basically. Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, across the street. So I think where we, we rode the same bus in yeah. seventh grade or whatever it was. And so I think, like, that's where we, you know, we see each other every morning and the relationship formed. And then, like, with the basketball aspect, you were always – you know, Man, always see it, playing. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you thought, but Dude, I'm so I think I think it just hands. grew from there. And then I think like you know, when high school started, we sort of drifted away a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You stopped playing basketball. We we were both playing basketball still. Mm-hmm. And then you know, junior senior year, you started hanging out with like my, my group of friends, I guess. And you sort of just you gelled and it stuck, and here we are. Weird. What about you, Ike? Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense for me. I think we met for the first time because of youth basketball. Probably uh, way back in the day, yeah. Yeah, and I think anybody who's played basketball in Rome, at least in our generation, would have met you, your father, everybody else involved with youth basketball yeah. in Rome. Uh, so that's how we knew each other first, for sure. Mm-hmm. And it was a pretty significant period of time where we did our separate things. We weren't yeah. very close at all in high school. We No, never. Honestly, not till like, what, the past, I'd say two years, maybe three, if you stretch it, is yeah. when we really started, like, chilling with each other sort of shit. Yeah, and it's it's that way for a lot of Jeff's friends for me, where I'm always around when he's around. If, we, if we're if we in Rome together, we're always in touch. So yeah. I think it's the same for him with my group of friends, just one grade older than you guys, and, yeah, and it applies to your group of friends as well. So uh, yeah. I'm happy to be in the mix, you know? Word, word. Um, So basically you said something about when you and Cook, like how you guys are boys, like your personalities obviously went together, like they mesh. That's how a lot of people in like life are friends. Yeah. I feel like mine and your personalities are almost opposite. Not not opposite, but, like, we butt heads a lot, I feel like. So, like, it, would you agree? And if, if so, why do you think we get along if we kind of have, like, different perspectives on a lot of shit? Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people would probably say that about all three of us, actually. I think you, before we did this podcast, you sent us a little bit of a preview we were going to talk about. Yeah. And you used the word opinionated. That's probably the most common trait that people like to point to when they talk about us three, right? Oh, for sure. Um, so I don't know. I think, I think 
it's natural that we go back and forth. Yeah. But in the same way that we're opinionated and we don't want it to come off poorly toward other people, mm -hmm. we get that about each other. And so can we, we can relate and talk yeah. and have serious conversation without um, any animosity or without it getting in the way of actual real friendship. Yeah, yeah like I, I get what you're saying. So um, speaking of opinionated, I guess I'll jump us right into the next thing. Um, you guys are both getting advanced degrees at school. So like congrats mm -hmm. on that. I didn't do that. Um, you're going to you're going to be a lawyer eventually. I mean, you're in law school. You're going to pass your bar eventually. Um, you're in like we said, you're very opinionated. I feel like that's a almost like a negative trait for a lawyer. But, you know, about law. So, like, how, how would you say being strongly opinionated is for a lawyer? Is that a good trait? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a pretty bold, broad. For, it, exactly. That's why I want to ask you. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I think I don't think it's a bad thing to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I, and, I think when most people say opinionated, they really just mean like passionate. And so I think most of the things I have opinions on, I am passionate about or care about or care to take the time to learn about. I normally don't have a strong opinion on something that I don't care about. Um, so I think for a lawyer to get back to your initial question, yeah. um, there's a lot of things you have to care about. And one of the things you have to care about the most is the interest of your client and so to be opinionated and to be passionate is great. The people you represent want you to care about their interests and, and represent them well and zealously with strong opinions. I feel that. I feel um, I, I like what you said to start that. You said like um, when you're opinionated, it's more of like passion. Yeah. I mean, I kind of somewhat agree with that. So like me, I'm a big like I'll debate anything. I'll argue anything. I mean, everyone, you guys both know that. Even if I know the truth, I'll argue the other side just for shits and giggles. <laughs> Absolutely. But like. 90% of the time, I would say, and I said this in the last episode, which is cool I, that you brought it up. Um, I think I only argue about things or debate about things that I, I think I have general knowledge on or like I I know I'm right sort of thing. Does that make sense? Like yeah, I, sure. I usually try to get my research on. I mean, Cook always gets me on sports because like no one's more up to date than Yeah, him, well, you're but. not going to argue something that you know you don't have knowledge of because like how are you going to argue something or have points or facts to your argument if you don't but, know what the heck you're talking so I'm, about? But that's what I'm saying. So the other side of the argument, so so if two people are arguing back and forth and I say, hey, I got facts. and So if, why was there an argument if both people have facts? There shouldn't be an argument. There should, should be the truth. So but I feel like a lot of people same argue. It's thing as opinionated like – one person might believe in one thing while the other person believes in the other. That's, but that's a belief. So that's 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 a, like a debate. I'm saying like an argument based on facts. I feel like I only argue if it's based on like factual information or things that I believe to be facts. A debate is, is a lot different, I believe. And maybe you, you have a different perspective, Ike. But I think a debate can be based on like your strong opinions towards something you want. Whereas an argument, like you should be going straight off of factual information to get to like an end result. Do you, do you think that's true or not? Yeah, well, I think there's two issues here. First, the first thing you brought up that definitely applies to a lot of people, probably including myself, is there's a lot of people that are just contrarians that whatever someone's going to say, they want to say the opposite. They, they yeah. like to stir the pot. It's and, fun. Well, yeah, it is fun, <laughs> and I'm probably guilty of it. Definitely guilty I would like of to it. Be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you guys know better than I do. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think the other thing you talked about is supporting an argument with facts. Yeah making meaning it's not an argument it's a debate or whatever the characterization yeah it's it's, it's really just gets into definitions well there's, it, exactly it's semantics but there's a lot of things in this world that reasonable minds can differ on right there's a lot of things that are not absolutely concrete yeah, as like much gray as you area. yeah yeah well yeah. i mean the, the politics for example i don't have any intention of talking about politics on this podcast <laughs> I know but, I won't. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of smart people on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. And all of those people in Congress, maybe not all, but most of those people in Congress have reasonable minds, and they differ on a lot of issues. So, I mean, they have facts to support their argument. Yeah. And facts and surveys and studies are, are all kind of weird, right? You can reverse engineer a fact or a study to support whatever argument yeah. you want to make. And I feel that. Um. So back to... <laughs> what we were talking about is both you guys like getting your advanced degrees. Um, I don't want to be a dick cook, but like you weren't the first person I would have thought would have stayed in school for fucking six years. No, I'm being honest. I'm not no, being I a dick. That. I mean, no, I, mean I'm I, out I agree. After four. If you would have told me I would have been going for six years and getting my master's degree in sports management, I would have said, I don't believe you. Like, yeah. So like, I, I mean, mean I, 
But yeah, go ahead, go talk ahead. about how it sort of happened. You know, my senior year playing baseball at Cortland, and I had a conversation with. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I got out, and I was still getting familiar with Cortland. I was only there for two years after going for community college for two years, and yeah. So I mean, it it, it came up to a rise that coach asked me if I would be interested in possibly getting my master's and staying around for two years to help out with the team and be around and just being around the program for another two years, which is huge. Um, and so I think it just, it just sort of fell into my lap and it, it worked out. And I mean, it's, it's worked out well. <laughs> Word. Um, yeah. Like how, I mean, I roomed with you, so I have like a little like insider information sort of shit, but like, obviously the baseball kept you there, but Based on, and I don't know if this is something you want to, like, announce, but based on my, like, knowledge, you were really not thinking about staying, right? No, I mean, when I got there back in the fall and, like, you know, I got my four-year degree or I had my bachelor's, and I was, like, you know, the first week I was getting, like, the syllabuses and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and I'm, like, thinking in my head, like, do I really want to fucking do this? Yeah. Like, you know, I did it for four years. I, you know, I have a degree in business and... You know, I'd be probably be able to find a job okay and, like... Something, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, like, you know, you get back in the classroom in the fall and you're, like, damn. Like, it's just, it, it was real. And, uh, yeah. you know, like, I went back and forth and, you know, I'm glad, obviously, that I stayed. It worked out well. And, you know, after that first couple of weeks, you know, you get back into it and it became natural again. And you So know, is, you, is that something you convinced yourself to do or did you have, like, from your parents, your girlfriend, like, other... Did other people convince you to stay? Because I feel like, and like I said, I could cut this shit, but, like, also, I feel like being your roommate, you were about to dip. Like, like you didn't have your shit unpacked. You were like, I don't think... And, like I said, like, I, I just... I personally, I think whoever might have helped you, if someone helped you, like, that was a great decision. But was it yours or was yeah, someone no, else Yeah, I mean, I had you? conversations with my mom and dad. You know, I talked to them for an hour. I talked to my girlfriend, Alex, for a little while about it. Yeah. And, you know, they... They, they, you know, they sort of pointed in to me that they wanted me to stay and to do it, but they, you know, in the end, they ultimately gave me the choice and they, they support me for it and whatever I wanted to do. And obviously, the people you love and you listen to, and you know, it, it, it yeah. I needed it at the time, and it, I mean, it, it worked out. So exactly, no, that's dope. And like for you, I mean, almost the opposite. I feel like, like we didn't chill in high school or whatever, but like I feel like you said you're passionate about a lot of things. Like I feel like you were always going to get a degree higher than just a bachelor's. Do you feel the same way? Were you always locked on what you were doing? I mean, law is something you obviously got to commit to pretty early, but um, is that something you like knew as soon as you got to school? Like you weren't going to be there for four years. You're going to be there for seven to eight or whatever. Uh, yeah. I think I knew I wanted to go to law school as soon as I got there. Um, mm -hmm. I had a pretty idealistic idea of, what idealistic my, idea all right yeah well <laughs> nah, rock with it. <laughs> an idealistic perception of I mean. uh what my educational career and professional career would look like yeah. and law school was always built into that um i became dead set on it once i realized i wasn't a great student in undergrad and i was like i gotta do something i mean i majored in political science that's yeah. Unless you really want to get into politics, it's not the most useful degree. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, law school was the intention all the way. And it got to a point where I, I knew I had to do it to at least maximize my professional potential. Word, that's dope. And then there's me with just my bachelor's chilling, doing that. Um, all right. Another thing I want to talk about is, uh, and I talked about this on the last episode, too. It's not up, but so no one knows. But um, I want to talk about ignorance. Like, I know it's very generic, but yeah, um, it's a bold, bold term. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, everything, everything I say, I, I get fucked over on anyway. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I always say something I shouldn't say on accident. But um, so like one of my big like pet fee pet peeves, excuse me, is um, I feel like I have a wicked low tolerance. And this probably is going to sound wicked arrogant for like ignorant people and like ignorant conversations. It does, it does sound arrogant. It sounds very arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> At least, but but it's not arrogant that I knew prior to saying it, right? So like I knew I knew how it was going to come off. I know what you mean. But it, it, that's that's what I want to get across. Like that is that something I feel like at least for you like that's something I feel like me and you were almost on the same page. Like like you always call me out of my bullshit because you know I say shit just to like just to say shit. Yeah. And that's kind of like that's how I am. Like I don't like the people that talk to hear themselves, which like I'm probably guilty of a lot. But like I, I hate that shit. I, I, it's just ignorant to me. Like, don't talk unless you have something fucking to say. Do you, do you agree with that or no? Like, is it, I feel like, like I said, me and you are on the same page with that. Yeah, sort of. I mean, I've got. <laughs> I, I, I like to think that I've gotten better and that in certain situations I can bite my tongue. 
But for a long time, I mean, it comes across, like you said, as arrogant. Very so arrogant, just straight yeah. up being an asshole. Yeah. Which, I mean, you can probably ask a lot of people in our hometown. They'll probably say that. About, about me. me or you or both of, us. both of us. Probably all three of us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Dude. I mean, good kid. Fuck, out fuck here. you. I'll call you an asshole right <laughs> a now. A good he kid. Asshole, I can't yeah. wait till your parents listen to this. <laughs> Honestly, your dad your dad called you an Little asshole Greek. on the driveway before Little we got over Greek. here. Yeah. My God. He's just kidding. But um, no, I know what you're saying, Mason. And yeah, to a certain degree. But um, I don't know. I've tried to be better at it because, like, well, first of all, ignorance is a bold term. Yeah. Um, but as far as if there's an opinion on a topic that, like we were talking about earlier, that I care about, that I'm passionate about, that I have invested time in, yeah. and someone says something, yeah, I'm the guy who fucking speaks up from the opposite side of uh-huh. the room for no reason. No one's expecting <laughs> to interject the conversation. I know that. Uh, I'm not necessarily proud of it. But whether it's conscious or not, it gets under my skin. I understand what you mean. Yeah, and I just happen to say it out loud. But yeah, I, I well, think it's so do I. Yeah, exactly. It's just <laughs> I don't know. It just annoys me. What do you think about it, Cook? I feel like you're that. You're not the opposite, but I feel like you bite your tongue a lot unless it's really about sports. I feel like you don't. Or unless it's one of us saying the thing. Then yeah, yeah I mean, if right it's in. somebody like I'm not very uh, an assertive person. Like I don't assertive. Right? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not the one to you know in a group to. <laughs> yeah, he's I'm not. W- inserts I'm not, a ton. <laughs> <laughs> Big inserter. I'm not. The, I'm not the one in the group to like you know speak up or you yeah. Know, I sort of just sit on the outskirts and like you said like sports like shit I'll talk sports all day like yeah we'll know, get I'll into those argue, yeah. I'll, we yeah, will I'll get argue there. that but like in any situation like it's like you guys said like you you know you try to bite your tongue but like I don't I mean it's just never like I don't think it's my place or it's just not my personality to you know speak up so do you like, feel like more like what we said like we openly admit and know like it is very arrogant but is that why you don't or is it just like you said is it because you're not assertive like like do you not speak up because you're like i know my fucking role or is it more because like you just don't like to like butt heads with people sort of thing uh, if that makes sense i think it's- a little bit of both i think like the whole thing like being assertive and whatever and it's just like that i don't like to speak up unless like i have to you know it's not like i'm gonna butt someone's head just to butt heads with somebody like so if, if you hear someone talking this complete bullshit like you know what they're saying is just like me i, I know if i, if I, if I, I know it. them personally and like have yeah. a relationship but if it's right. somebody i don't know or don't like have a relationship with or don't care about then i'm not gonna say anything i feel that no, no that's, I, I, and that's true for you for sure um i mean I, we said we're gonna get into it we might as well s- kind of get into the sports a little um so this is mainly for eichner um what's it like going to a school that you've openly been like a humongous fan of since you were like a kid, like, and, and the best basketball program in the country. You know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. Um, you know what? It's not that much different than the way that I lived my life before. Um, as a young kid, I had parents that were super into Syracuse sports and mm-hmm. I was around all the time. Um, and it's not an undergraduate program either. So there's yeah. not as the same much, atmosphere. It's not yeah. the same feel. Yeah, it's not. It's a little different. There's not as much of like a a real civic connection, a connection, a sense of belonging for the graduate you, students. Wait, sorry, you said a real civic connection. I'm S- lost. What civic connection? Yeah, what's that? What's how? So you... civics like a sense of community. Okay. Okay. Like you belong. Like we have a civic connection to Rome. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I just didn't know the word. Yeah. No, I hear you. Um, but yeah, the grad school is a little bit removed from the undergraduate community. So I've tried to do things to get my peers in grad school involved. Like we have tailgates and I try to make people go to the games. There's just not the same type of support. I mean, everyone's from a different under undergraduate, yeah. uh, a different part of the country. They already have their college programs. So it's great that I live close and I can go to even more games that I would have, but in no means has it changed my fandom i've always been as fanatical about syracuse sports as i am now so a question i guess um just to follow up did it kind of drive you towards the school at least oh yeah yeah okay yeah for sure i mean i remember telling all my teammates in college different law schools when i was hearing from them where i was getting in or whatever and once i got into syracuse and i had a a reasonable financial aid package Mm -hmm. they were all like stop kidding yourself why are you even (laughs) yeah you're going and they were right and it just feels like home for me 
I mean, I've been there so many times. I already knew my way around the campus before I already got there, and I didn't go there as an undergrad. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Kind of a rare thing, and uh, so yeah, there was no doubt in my mind once I heard from them. And do you um, I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but maybe other people don't. You, do you go to most home ga- basketball games or all? I mean, I would assume you probably get oh, to dude, most. I go to the all. exhibition games. Really? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I can't miss. I mean, there's been situations where I've had to. Yeah. But uh, if there's any reasonable way I can make it, I'm I'm there. And what's, like, the atmosphere on campus like? I mean, I know you said it's a little different than the undergrads, but, like, do you see a lot of the athletes? I mean, I know, like, football players, there's 50, whatever, on a roster, so that's different. 50, 90. However, however many. I mean, like I said, yeah. you guys know way more sports than me. <laughs> but, um, so, like, basketball, there's, what, a 12-man roster tops and, like, six yep. of them play. Do you see them on campus a lot? Like, is there actual interaction, or they got their own separate schedule, like, going to art classes and shit? Uh, I see them a little <laughs> bit. Art class. Yeah. Art class. <laughs> I see them a little bit. Obviously, I'm not in class with them. Yeah, I they, see them walk. Actually, the law school is right across the street from the Dome. Oh, that's dope. They practice in the Dome the night before games, so I'll see them walking out of practice, things like that. Uh, the undergraduates are mixing with them a lot more. They're, they're quite literally their peers. I mean, they're in classes yeah. with them. They're in the Shine Student Center eating lunch with them. Shit like that. Uh, I don't see him a lot, but it's weird also because I'm older than all of them now. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, so you kind of shit, shit on them, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> not even, a, not even a little bit. I wish I saw more. I would solicit them. Say, well, you're gonna be more of my clients. I need to be your agent, right? There you, but, dude, uh, that'd be something. Yeah, a little networking. Um, yeah. all right. So just to take a step back from before, because I could tell we're gonna get into sports, and I don't, I don't want to do that yet. Yeah. Um, this is the first episode that will at least be released that um that will at least be released um that we're drinking on um al- <laughs> alcohol so i, I just wanted to point is that, that out sound of pie? Is that not allowed? no no it's good it's good it, i just wanted though? to kind of acknowledge that it was there so um i guess a big thing and i talk about it frequently i guess is in rome like drinking like that's like a big thing around here what's your guys's opinions i kind of want to hear from cook on it because we like talk about it i guess but um What's your guys' opinion on why we drink so often? Like, I wouldn't consider any of us alcoholics or anything crazy, but, like, I feel like the only time a lot of us get together is if we're, like, celebrating slash drinking. And I could be wrong. So what's your guys' opinion on that? Is it something to do with our hometown, or is it something to do with, like, that's just something we all enjoy? Well, I think the big thing now is, like, where we're at now in our lives, that, like, you know, you're home on holidays and, you know, people are gone their ways and they're living here, living there, and... You know, you're, a lot of their families are still in Rome, so Thanksgiving, Easter, like tomorrow, like a lot of people come and celebrate with their families, and so like it's the first time you you know you get together with everybody. So I think that maybe plays a factor into it. For sure, but I mean, I'm not gonna take that answer because I feel like it's still a little bullshit. Like, <laughs> no, no, I'm being honest. Like, you, you, like it's a good answer. Like, yeah, yeah. we're only doing it because it's like people are coming away. Well, no, I'm not saying home. it's the only reason we do it, but like I mean, summer, you know, you, your weekends, everyone's pretty much working Monday through Friday it's it's your way to you know have fun or see like I feel like dude we've been doing it since fucking uh, like 11th maybe 12th grade like I feel like that's not a good excuse like summer everyone's working I don't think it has anything to do with the hometown I think but I feel like there's got to be a better reason than the one we're getting it can't be because like like in this at this point like today I believe that answer works but what about for the past four to five years it's not because we're working five days a week it's not because we're going to school I think it's a you're and we oh I, also none of us young, have drank until we were twenty one. It's what you do. Put that out there. What's up? Bro? None of us have drank below the age of twenty one. That's we can't can't get into that bag. Yep. But um. Never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I Not caught us. myself slipping on an icy slope. Um. All right. So what were you saying? I cut you off, but I just had to get that out there. I don't remember. My bad. I, I just had to get the disclaimer before before anything happened. Like, what do you think? Do you agree with his reason? I do. Um. And I don't even think. We need a reason. I mean, I've spent, no, seriously, I've, I've spent some time in the last five or six years in some other cities. I've lived with my dad in Charlotte. I spent a summer living in New York City. It's not unique to Rome, New York, that people between the age of, well, let's say 21 and even 65, when they have free time, they like to drink. Yeah. People like to drink. They like to take a load off, forget about the problems. Any reason you drink, I don't necessarily think everyone has the same reason but yeah, i think but, all uh, reasons are valid yeah, i don't think the fact that we grew reason. up in a small town makes us drink more but my but my question is why so like i i'm on your guys' side i just play devil's advocate a lot on here yeah, yeah i enjoy drinking it's fun i know why i do it but why do we do it so often because you said well dude anyone 21 to 65 they enjoy to have a beverage whatever not yeah. everybody but they're but a lot, a lot of people. people but why don't we fucking 
Why don't we go play golf and not drink? drink why don't we go golf. play tennis? Yeah, why don't we? Why don't, we why don't we rollerblade? Why aren't we exercising? Like, and like I said, I I'm playing devil's advocate. We do, but there's 24 hours in a day, bro. <laughs> I, dude, that, I can spend 12 of them playing golf and hitting the gym. What are you doing and, while you're while you're playing golf? Drinking beer? Honestly, I don't drink that much beer when I play golf. I take it too seriously. I suck, but I want to <laughs> not suck, so I don't drink that much while I play. Speaking of golf, I was fucking striping it today, my man. <laughs> yeah, I don't that, believe that. That's what you want to call it. All right, listen, listen. What do you shoot, Jeff? Relax, dude. Uh, you you said it. you were striping it. Striping it. I was keeping it in play. That's yeah, the definition of striping it for ball, me. You only lost one ball, so we'll go what with that. What do you that. shoot? We, we, we played a scramble. We played a scramble. All right, all right. So this is all right. So so <laughs> Cook, you only so play a scramble. it in the scramble. Yeah, you so, only play a scramble so Cook, when you, you can't play your own ball. You Correct. tell me if I'm bullshitting. I'm gonna try to tell you what I think. I think for not playing in three years, this is my first nine holes in three years. Oh, I, I swear to God. So you can imagine. No, I believe you. Yeah, I saw that. First nine holes in three years. I think I played better than I should have. I'm not saying I hit good shots, but like a lot of. I think I I had a lot of potential to improve. I I agree with that. Like I think the big thing was that you like you knew what you're doing. Yeah. And you know it wasn't like balls were hooking this way, hooking this way. You know you were just duffing a couple, or you know it wasn't like your ball was you know moving across. You were going side to side, or yeah. You know you, I mean you played golf or whatever, and you know you haven't played in the past couple of years, but you have a general idea. Of what you need to do, and so it wasn't awful. Besides my my chipping was awful. Oh, oof. Besides that, what was really awful? I didn't hit. Fu- we just used your shots because you played good. I didn't like. Well, half the time you didn't have to shoot because I was on the fucking green. Oh, oh, dude! If we're gonna get into that bag, dude, <laughs> this kid, dude, he swears he's good at everything he fucking does. You had an all right day on That's the course. A fact. You were playing against chumps, bro. Yeah, I was playing against chumps, so I was winning money. <laughs> you can only beat the teams you play. <laughs> you bro. guys made the teams. I was just there. So, so, so all right. So you guys agree that in any sport, you guys play to your competition. Is that a big thing? You guys believe in that? Play to your competition? Play to the level of your competition. You've never heard that, or am I saying it wrong? No, no I know right. what you mean. Yeah. yeah. You can, I think to a degree. Sure. But, you, but like you if can I'm only playing somebody good, play. I'm giving everything I got. Right. I Even guess. if they play that sport, I'm I'm going to, you know, I think uh, he'll agree. We're, we ain't, <laughs> we're going to act like we've been playing that sport. <laughs> well, I agree, I agree with you. This dude will act like he's done everything he hasn't <laughs> done. But, um, I mean, I can see the direction you're trying to take this anyway, so let's get into it. You guys are both big competitors, so what's up? Like, I wanna, I want you guys to compare yourselves, and I don't want no cookie cutter bullshit. I want you guys to compare yourself as baseball players. I know you guys play different positions. I know Eichner probably has pitched in his past or whatever, but like, I want to just, a, in general, as baseball players, competitors, like college wise, high school, like just compare yourselves. Who, who is better? Who is worse? I want to hear it. I really want to hear it. Start, start with Cook, and let's see what Eichner's rebuttal is. Uh, right. All right. I, I guess go, I'll ask the let questions. Let him go first. All right. So like, I'll start with this, and then you roll with it. First of all, who do you think was a better baseball player? Oh man, that's no. I have it's way gonna more be to say. Cutter, yeah, bro. no, 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 no. I want you to start with just I was a better baseball player or whoever, and then the rest of the shit you have to say. No, because I think we were both pretty good at very different things. Yeah, exactly. But, so you can't say that one of you guys was better. So if, if so if I played could. basketball and I'm a great three we point played, shooter and you're we, good at dunking, I can't say I think I'm better than you in general. We played at nearly the exact same level. Yeah. And had very similar levels of success. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how you can measure who's the better player. Because you He's guys a are better pitcher. I'm a better shortstop. Because you guys are both competitors. So I feel like in your heads throughout your whole lives, and I could be wrong. What do you want, what do you want me to say? If we were both professional players. Yeah. What about They'd it? pay me more than they paid him just because I'm a shortstop and he's a starting pitcher. I can play every day. He can play one every four games. That's the only thing I got for you. Otherwise, I think it's a toss-up. Whether who, who you'd rather have on your team, it depends on what you need. Do you need a shortstop? you need a starting pitcher? All right, so then, all right, just to get an argument out of it. So let's kick it back to, like, Little League days when fucking Cook wasn't – like, Cook was still a he nasty – He was better but, when we were younger. All right, so, so he was better. Yeah, just based on being younger and what he he could do more or what, like what when well, you didn't can develop. Can I give fast my enough? full answer now without you trying to pull the <laughs> binary well, I, answer? I, that I, I gotta get the me? argument. That's what I'm here for. But so, if there isn't one, so here's what one. here's here's the thing about me and Jeff. Yeah, Jeff in almost every aspect of every sport is better at the fine tune skilled aspects of that sport. So oh, yeah. For example, in basketball, he's a better shooter. In baseball, he's a better pitcher. Um. Most of the errors that I make defensively are throwing errors, right? I can get to most balls. I can glove most balls, but I throw some balls away. 
that is like a fine tuned skill thing. Talk a little more into your mic. This is just the echo. Oh, you starting. can't hear me. No, the echo is starting. It annoys me. Oh, my bad. But yeah, uh, I remember even when we were kids, ten years old. There's a thing called the pitch hit and run. Mm-hmm. In the pitching aspect of it, there's a target behind home plate that you have to hit. Yeah, you throw like ten balls. Jeff would hit it nine times. I'd hit it like twice. How far is it? Just from uh, the mound, literally, literally mound, 45, literally foot 45 mound. feet. Okay, yeah. so 45 feet. 45 foot mound. Yeah. Even now, if we went in your driveway and we chucked jump shots, if we played pickup basketball, Jeff wouldn't guard me at the three point line because he knows I can't shoot. Let but him shoot. That's all he yeah. can do is shoot. <laughs> so we're different types of athletes. He is has refined skill techniques. I'm a little bit more raw, faster, a little more explosive, and that's right. why we play different positions. All right. So would you say? I don't want to get into like the, I don't know, like the adaptation <laughs> weird shit. But I'm saying, I guess the way to question or uh, like form this is, uh, would you say Cook? I guess, and this this is the way I gotta say it, has adapted based on his body type. So like, obviously, Cook's a little bigger, a little slower. Like he shoots threes. He, he like he doesn't have to run up and down the court as far to get to the three point line. He pitches. He, I'm just asking. I don't know the yeah. answer. Would I don't you think say that adaptation? I think what would it be? Of- I think a lot of it's God-given talent. He probably has better hand-eye coordination than I do. So, But you don't think the shit he's – I mean, I know it's pure talent. The kid's nasty at a lot of shit. But I, like, you don't think the shit he's good at – Well, when you do something more, you're going to be better at it, yeah. I mean, he knew that I got to – I guess if you want to call it adapting, but it's more being self-aware and playing your game. Well, I think it's a style of play. Like, you, like I guess you do the – Dap, like I was never the fastest. I wasn't stealing bags. Like I wasn't hitting ground balls to the infield and beating them out. You know, <laughs> he, you know, if you weren't hitting he got, it all, <laughs> you weren't hitting it all. <laughs> you though, you told me you used to hit dingers though. No, I never. I hit one dinger in my pull up the little league career. stats, bro. Literally, <laughs> he hit, you know, literally he hit one dinger. Yeah. I was there. Who'd he he ran out? down the left field line, celebrated with the fans. He wasn't messing <laughs> around. You know what Man. I'm talking about in Cooperstown. No, I'm talking. Okay, I'm talking about older. Oh, Cooperstown. I had at least three or four that Probably, year. Probably. Yeah. But like going back <laughs> to the whole adapting and stuff, I think I just knew, you know, I was never going to be the fastest. I was never going to be the quickest, you know. And I think I learned how to play that way because I knew my, I knew my strengths and my weaknesses. Yeah, That's it's funny. almost less him adapting, and that's what the game gave him, and he took what the game gave him. Take what you're given. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, all right, Cook. What's your side of it? Because like I said, like you heard his argument or not I, argument. I mean, like same thing. Basically, just what he said that yeah. I'm not gonna tell you I was better. I'm not gonna tell you he was better. Um, but are you saying that for the same reason as him? Because he's not saying it because he thinks it's different ways. Like he's good at some shit. You're. Good. Are you saying because you guys are friends, or you think do you agree with no. what he said? No, I'm agreeing with what he said. Okay. Like yeah. especially you know at the college level, he was playing shortstop every day, and I was starting every Friday. You know, like it's mm-hmm. it's different. But even in high school, I mean, if you want to look at the fucking box scores and our stats, I mean they're probably pretty similar. I mean he was hitting leadoff, I was hitting second. You know it was. It was always back in, like, you know, it was always us. I'd pitch game one, he'd pitch game two. Like, it was it was just fucking cooking like there. Like, you know, yeah. like, it was, it wasn't ever, like, you know, obviously, you know, people weren't looking at him as a pitcher in college because, you know, he didn't have the stuff or he he competed. You know, he he knew what he had to do to get guys out and stuff like that. Like, he, he was – I think the big thing, even in college, like – you know, speaking for him, like freshman, sophomore year, you know, he wasn't getting much time and stuff. And he saw that. And, you know, and going from high school, you're playing since freshman year, right? Like, yeah. you know, you're, you got to, it's a different, you got to adapt. Like kids are, you know, better and you got to, you're working. Mm-hmm. And so going into junior and senior year, senior year he was all region or whatever it was. And, you know, he worked his, you know, he worked. And that's the type of person he is. And it's just that, like, you know, that, I think the difference is going from high school where you, you know, you are the guy to you're going to college and there's a bunch of guys. There's a couple guys, you know, and there's guys ahead of you. And I think the big thing is, like, being able to be good junior and senior year after not getting the reps as the starters and stuff. Like, you got to do a lot on your own, and it's just the hard work and adapting. Like, I think the big thing with college baseball now, because I still see it now, is a lot of people have a lot of talent. But what separates people is – having that talent and having to know 
how to play baseball. Like, you could have all the talent in the world, but when you're at the plate and you don't understand how people are pitching you the first couple at bats, I think that's what he did very well. You know, you might get him out the first first or second time, but he's going to make an adjustment, and that third time he's going to hit a double in the gap. You know, it's I think it's knowing the game and being smarter than, I guess, maybe smarter than your opponent, like knowing the game rather than just relying on talent at that level. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I think Jeff and I have a lot of traits in common and go about it pretty different ways. For example, <laughs> I, I think we – both have a high baseball IQ. Um, sure. Him, when he's on the mound, for most of his career, he got guys out with two pitches. Yeah, two it's, pitches. It's just, I think the big thing of the baseball IQ, like, yeah, you got to keep the hitter guessing and you know, like, it's not about how good your stuff is, but where it is or, yeah, you know, where you can't be throwing fastballs at 85 miles an hour. And even in Division three baseball, people, people are going to be able to hit that. I feel like you just flipped it from fucking. No. No, no, I, no, I, I get the answer from your question. Flipped though. it to like us arguing, but no, 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 not even to get off the argument because I knew that wasn't going to happen after Ike spoke. I feel like it almost flipped from like answering the question to like you like summed up like differences in positional players in college baseball. Like that's what I got yeah, out no. of it. Mm-hmm. No, I was trying to talk more about us personally, actually. So the way that the IQ manifests itself is totally different. But another thing is like leadership style, uh-huh. right? Like for me. I'm more of a vocal leader than Jeff is. Any teams that we played on together, unquestionably, we both were leaders of the team, but I talked a lot more than he did. Um, But as far as, like, leading by example and being rock solid and being clutch, and if if it's a big big game, you'd rather have Jeff on the mound than me at the plate. I've never seen the kid choke. But he's he's quiet, and when we run, he's going to dog it. I don't do any of that. (laughs) But – at the same time, he had his own leadership style that made all of his teammates trust him. So, in no way were we similar. Were we both effective? Yes. We're like, going, um, going off him just quickly. Uh, no, you're good. Just the whole mentality, like, what are you saying? Like, my mentality, like, even if you ask my college coach, like, now, like, even when he I was a captain senior year or whatever, and – he knew when he was naming me a captain, it wasn't going to be a vocal leader. I was going to do by an example. You know, I was going to be there early. I was never going to, you know, I mean, I was working as hard as I could. It might have not looked like it, but like, you know, <laughs> I was lying. doing. I as was hard as you could. Day. Now he's lying. Working as hard as you could. <laughs> Tell uh, the truth. Not as as selective. Could, like, he's very was, selective you know, about what he wants to I was always the one, you know, especially being like senior year. You know, you're always like, you got to be there early. You know, you're you're the one of the last people to leave and. But the big thing with, like, he said, like, he said that, like, he'd rather have me on the mound than him at the plate. I think the big thing with me is that, I guess it's mentality as well and my personality that, like, in a big situation, like, I wanted the ball and yeah. I wanted to be that guy. But, like, if you would have if you would have looked at me, like, I wouldn't have been, I would have been unfazed. Like, it wasn't, right. there was never a big enough moment that I was, like, Oh shit! Like I don't want the ball. Like mm-hmm. word. So like um, not not a selfish question, but like a, uh, I guess an ignorance question because I don't really know about baseball in depth. I mean, I I could talk about it, but nothing crazy. Is it harder? So like being a pitcher, I know there's a rotation, and like so Cook went to Cortland. Like maybe he he knew he was gonna be the number four guy his sophomore year. You were a junior, junior when you went there, whatever. Um, so f- for a positional player like you, like you knew there was a guy there that you had to beat out. Like, is it tougher? Or is it the same? Like, so Cook had three guys he had to beat out to be the, the ace. But, like, you had one guy. You had, Is it the same or is it, like, harder for you? Like, if, if you come in and there's a sophomore at shortstop and you're a freshman, are you like, fuck, dude, like, this guy's going to be playing for three years? Or is it about the same? Like, you just got to beat the guy that's, that's got your spot. Yeah, that's right. It's the same. You same. can only – you control what you can control. And if you pitch well, you play well, there's certain times where you make the coach's decision easy. I mean, just outplay the guy in front of you, whether yeah. it's another starting pitcher and you're throwing bullpens in practice or you're yeah. scrimmage in practice, or the guy in front of you gets hurt. Take advantage of your opportunities. Make the coach's decision easy. I feel that. Um, all right, let's 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 do a little more sports here. So we already talked about Ike, the Syracuse, goes to the school there. He's obviously a fan. We got Mr. fucking Mr. Duke over oh, here God. with the golf another head cover, the license plate. What's the deal, dude? What what's up? Fucking Cuse is obviously better than Duke. 
No. <laughs> what do you mean? Maybe in 2003, but ever since, no. 2003, <laughs> but, uh, who was playing? I don't know, man. Last nine years. I don't know, a kid named Melo. I don't even think he's in the And NBA they dogged anymore. him on that fucking list of top five freshmen? Yeah, no, that was... That, I, I had an argument on Twitter, but like, I, like going back to this conversation earlier, that I wasn't going to put myself out there. But like, <laughs> if you look at the list... It's trash. It's a different generation, and like I think somebody actually commented on like they were like, it was they were listening like the one and done era where it became like a it, that yeah. was the thing. Like Carmelo could have like at the time at could have went to the NBA yeah. out of high school, right? But he didn't. You know these guys had to come, and I think like I don't know if you agree, but the list was made off like the last. I think it was 2013, so the last like five years. Obviously Carmelo well, Anthony, and if you, I actually looked up his numbers. Like mm-hmm. compared it to like, he was like twenty two and eleven as a freshman. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously Wild. he's on the fucking list, but like, so they should have made the list something the, else. I think the list was made for like the one and done era. Yeah, you're right. You yeah. are right. Um, so I mean, I'm a Syracuse fan, nowhere near as much as Ike, but I mean, I keep up when they're playing. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, usually you catch me and you're, you're like you name the starting five, and yeah, I'll get like yeah, a no solid idea. a solid two, and then I look it up. But the rest of the year, I'll be on that shit. <laughs> um. All right, Ike's walking out because we're talking about a sensitive subject. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's just grabbing a new wagon. Um, all right, so what do you think? What's the case with Duke? Uh, I mean, they just had obviously what, what I would say is the two best players in the nation, um, yeah. and they fucking couldn't win the shit. Like, how, how do you how do you explain uh, that? I, I'd love to hear this. Uh, how do you have how do you have two? I think how do you have three of the top I mean, ten like, players? Well, yeah. Cam Reddish sucks, though. But it's true. That's another thing. Very true. But, like, having the – I mean, like, it just shows how strong college basketball is, I think, actually, like, year to year that, like, obviously it's the same teams. That are like, but Virginia won the first national title in their school history this year. But, like, you know, having the same – like, the top two guys in the country, you still got to go out there and play. I mean, see, Virginia had, you know, experience and they've been there. And yeah. I think that's a big thing. But, obviously, you're having the talent, but you they, they never played in the – a Final Four. I think that's you know, the big like thing. the big situation. Obviously, like they're the, you know what they say is the best two NBA prospects or whatever you want to you know say. But I think you still you best still got to go out and if they one has a bad game, you know it's it, it, your season's over. So would you so, I mean, agree I, that I, I don't think it's as, as easy as you think it is to win a national championship because then people would be doing it every year. But I mean, you look at it. I mean, well, Villanova, Villanova was two out of the last three or whatever it was, but like. They were had they they had the same team and they had the four year guys so I think there's different mentalities of doing it like you know Kentucky and Duke the last couple of years are all the one and dones and they reload every year whereas you look at Villanova they had four year guys in Virginia so this Virginia, year Virginia yeah yeah they had the juniors and seniors that so I mean I mean Duke won in 2015 with the four freshmen but like you know Kentucky won with Anthony Davis and them but like I think both sides work like if like. I think it shows that both sides have worked over the past, like, you know, five, six years that if you look at the teams, there's been a couple one-and-done teams and there's been a couple experienced teams that, you know, have been able to win it. So do you think the mentality of the player changes? I mean, I know, like, Zion and uh, Trey Jones and uh, Cam, like, all of them, I know they had, like, had a group chat before they even went to the school, all that shit, but, like, their chemistry, like, outside was good. But do you think their mentality changes based on knowing they're they're gone after the year? Maybe not Trey Jones, but, like, the other three. Are- I think the big thing that showed that this year is was you know Zion went down with that injury, and there was no doubt in his mind that he was playing Duke basketball again. You yeah. know, and everyone's yeah, like, but- everyone's like, oh, that's a dumb decision. His future, he's lose could possibly lose out on millions and stuff. But he had that. He was you know if he that's how, I guess it's selfish, but like if you Zion's personality is not like that and the way he said it and he's like, I'm playing no matter, like he's playing, if he's healthy, I'm playing. Oh, it's unselfish. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm unselfish. saying like, I'm saying if he held Admirable. out, like how, how, that makes him look, obviously people understand like why he's holding oh, out. If he held like, out. Yeah. Yeah. If, but like the unselfishness, I think that pays to his character. He like, held out for what? Like three weeks saying he, he, he didn't held to... out. But he was just getting back. No, 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 no. Not his injury. I know he didn't hold on to that. I'm saying, he said he he said he might go back to Duke. Yeah, right. I That's what that I'm was, saying, dude. That, I, mean, I thought like, that was yeah, corny I think as it was fuck. All chunk of shit. But exactly. I think That's... like I would joke my roommate. I was like, hey, like you know, RJ was one day, Cam Reddish was the next. Like, do you think they were like, hey, like you go first, I'll go second, you go third? You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. Like, I, I literally <laughs> you know just think he like, did it. For, I think he like, did it for the hype span. factor, dude. I think he knows what he's worth. Like, oh, I think. 100%. I, well, I know he knows what he's worth. Like, 
I think that's the only reason he did it. I mean, I don't think it was a huge publicity stunt, but mm-hmm. he knows he's getting talked about. He knows he has a sneaker deal coming up. He's going to have to yeah. sign. Like, the fact that, oh, maybe I'll stay. Like, or I'll scare the fucking Knicks who got the first pick or might have the first pick. I think that was all. It was just a big hype train thing. Like, he knows he's the one they're talking about. Like, that's how I feel about it. What do you think? Uh, So, which part do you want me to say? Yeah, with? we talked about a couple Wh- things. Why Duke didn't win or why Zion didn't announce earlier? Oh, oh. All right, um, Jeff's got to pee. Yeah, I, just, I hope his mic's still on. Um, so I want to, I want you to talk about. For basically, I was gonna ask him. Um, do you think it's possible to develop a passion for a school based on just going there for one year? If you weren't a fan prior to going there, so these one and done kids, do you think they can fucking? I love fucking Duke. I want to win a. Sh- or is it just you're there to play basketball? It's the number one team in the nation. You're getting a lot of ESPN time, and then you're dipping. I think there's some kids that feel that way. The latter scenario you described, yeah. where it's a it's a means to an end. They're there for a year because they have to be with the current NBA rules. Um, but I think definitely there's a way to develop a passion. And at Duke, they use the word brotherhood. Yep. Um, I think you definitely can become as much of a Dukey as a four-year guy like J.J. Redick in one year. Um, he was nasty. Well, of course he was. but Oh, still. Great role player. J.J.? Yeah, in dude, the, in he the NBA? adapted. He adapted the game. Oh, That's he's why he still plays. Great NBA career. Yeah. yeah he's, was it's been 12 years from now, at least? A while, yeah. Something like that. But anyway, yeah. Not, as a college athlete, I never played at the Division One level. I certainly didn't play at the Power Five level, the <laughs> cream of the crop like I do. Um, but those guys spend so much time together. Um, they live together, obviously. They're on the court together all the time. Another thing is when you know you're not going to be there for another year, you make sure you're eligible for the basketball season. So you go to class for about the first four months, the first semester, right? Then after that, you're strictly playing basketball. So they're living, eating, sleeping, playing basketball with these guys all watch the your, time. Watch your mic when you sit back down. I just don't want you to unplug it. They have a leader like Coach K leading them. They have a huge alumni network full of superstars and NBA players that yeah. are there to come back and talk to them. Um, as we saw with Zion, he wasn't going to be the number one pick if he went straight out of high school. He Wait, would have been the third again? pick. Zion Williamson would not have been the number one pick in the draft if he went out of high school. If he was allowed to come out of high school. Yeah, like Correct. Yeah, who who would have been the number one pick? I'm asking. I don't know. Cam Reddish was the number one recruit in the no, class. RJ. RJ, I thought. I'm sorry. RJ Barrett. Yeah. No. RJ Barrett was the number one recruit in the class. But you still think he would? Zion Williamson was a dunker in high school. Nobody thought he was this in college. Am I correct, Jeff? No, 100%. I mean, yeah. if you look at the, well, we, you know, the high school videos, you know, he's playing – Little kids. <laughs> yeah, so that's what it looks like. Yeah. And, you know, like, you never saw a highlight of him, you know, step back jumper. Everyone always says that R.J. Barrett had the more complete game, so he would have been the number one pick. It translated better into the NBA. But after watching what Zion just did, the yeah. college kids, like. That's something we talked about. Uh, we were at Ike's house. I'm, I know you, you know where I'm going with this, probably both of you. We were at Ike's house and we were watching a Duke game. I don't know if they lost or we were talking about a game they had lost. Maybe it was the Gonzaga game. It was a Florida game. State game. Oh, Florida State. Yeah, Zion got hurt on a buzzer time. beater. Okay, so, so we were talking. Was that the one Cam Reddish hit the three? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we were talking there, and I was like, I said to both you guys, you guys were like fucking like hyping up basically RJ. And to correct me if I'm wrong, but you were like, yo, like he's the one that needs to take the shot. And I was like, bro, he might be the one that has to take the shot. Zion hasn't touched the ball in the last two minutes. And, like, you guys were both kind of against it. Like, nah, that's not his role. That's not his role. And, like I said, stop me if I'm wrong. But I think over the next three to four games, even Coach K or whoever made the call realized Zion's the fucking guy that needs that ball. Right. And then IQ texted me. And you were like, yo, I think what Mason said was right. Like, I think I think well, he is the go-to guy. Like, he is that, like, did people's mentality in the world change? Sort of? Not that I was right and everyone's wrong. But no, did you it kind of right. switch up? Well, yes, it did. So... I think for a long time it was pretty undeniable that R.J. Barrett was much better at creating his own shot and getting to the rim than Zion Williamson is. And at the end of the game, that's normally the scenario, right? Yeah. Especially when everyone knows you're playing for the last shot. So you have the clock get to 12, the guy has to drive and put up a shot or facilitate, yeah. right? R.J.'s better at all three of those things than Zion Williamson is. We learned later in the year that Zion improved a ton, but – the original point that we were talking about is can you become so invested in a program just being there for one year? And the answer is yes, because of the Zion Williamson case exactly, how much value Duke brought to him 
from going from this this guy who was a dunker, he was a top five pick. He wasn't number one pick. Yeah. Now he's undisputably the number one pick in the draft. Duke provided him tremendous value. I'm sure that he matured a ton. He made some best friends. He made connections in the league. You gotta understand, Coach K coached USA basketball for a couple Olympics. So, so Jim Beheim, assistant coach. He was the assistant coach. Thanks for that two three zone last year. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Best defense, defense in the defense, fucking so. college basketball. <laughs> it's second. But um second what? Best defense? Yeah. Don't oh, like statistically? Generally. Oh, <laughs> I was like what? I think it's like stats. reiterating but what he said that um the connections that like I mean obviously Duke benefited a shit ton from Zion when like yeah, but you know, versa, ESPN too. everyone's like, Oh, it's Zion, Zion, Zion But like it's Duke, you know, you're representing that brand and that brand's going from another level that like you know, he's like he said that Zion, you know, Duke's helped him tremendously, but Zion's helped Duke just as much. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say if you didn't. Yeah, I I think almost more. Like and this is almost getting into the debate on should they be paid, blah blah blah. I think Zion helped Duke more than Duke helped him. Like yes he he developed, he got better, he got more publicity but I think he brought that school a hell of a lot that they would have never had. Duke's always they get their televised games, they're always top ten in the nation. They got their shit, but dude, he's on another level. Like he's on a different planet. He's a, a beast. I think he brought that whole school just more publicity than they've gotten in who's the last person from Duke? That, maybe Kyrie, and he played, what, two games? I, I could be wrong. Was uh, there someone else? It was more than two. But, <laughs> but so all you're doing <laughs> all, you, all you're doing is reinforcing the point yeah. that this person and this university can become synonymous in just one year. Uh, no. They'll always be connected to Duke. No. I think, no? No. I, okay. I'm, I'm not reinforcing – because, like, well, we're still back. We'll we're ask still, the listeners about that. It sounded like it was. We're, we're still on the subject of, like, can you become that passionate in a year, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I didn't reinforce that with what I just said. I'm saying he brought them way more than they gave to like, ma- way more than the school gave to him. But talking he didn't about, have to be there. Talking about dollars? He didn't or? have to be there is what I'm saying. And I really don't want to get into this, but. Well, he had to be there. He had to be there. <laughs> Not to be somewhere. Dude, he had to have been somewhere. And I think no matter what program he went to, he was bringing them more than, like, I don't care about the connections with the fans and are the you teammate. talking about dollars because then yes i mean yeah i'm kind of tiptoeing around it but yeah like because i've talked about this in three episodes so i don't want to keep getting into it but i think he brought that program more because like i said like just the it's the zion factor it's who he is like i don't i don't think it has anything to do about being passionate for being at the school he could have went to indiana and they would have been the most televised well, he was going to go to clemson actually was he really yeah jesus I mean, he's from Christ. south carolina clemson, yeah. i didn't know anything about clemson. that yeah. it's not so what do you think zion williamson shoe contract would have looked like if he didn't go to duke if zion didn't go to duke so say zion was allowed to go from high school to the nba or he did what darius Baisley did to <laughs> year off and well I don't want to hear about it's that. A, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was horrible. Is, what, he signed a Reebok deal or some <laughs> dumb shit? It was New Balance. New he, actually, ba- <laughs> he, he actually made a million dollars this year, which is a lot more than all three of us. A lot made. more than I'll probably make in a long time. <laughs> but um, but anyway, so what's Zion's shoe contract look like in his I, rookie season in the NBA without Duke? I'm guessing, well, well, but it's the way you're saying it. So, like, I think without Duke, his uh, going out of high school if he was allowed to, he probably would have had, like, a $30 million contract. And that's my opinion. It could be 100% wrong. Okay. But also, I think... So say, what's he going to sign now? He's at Duke. I mean, LeBron's was 80. KD's was 60. Rookie contracts. I think Zion's is going to be somewhere close to the highest contract it's ever. It's going to be $100 million. Uh, I think it's going to be very close to 100 I don't know if right. they'll give him the 100 They but They should. But um. So, but I also don't think it was Duke. I, I think he could have went, yeah. went to any top 10 program in the nation... And got the same contract. He, whatever, nah. whatever I, school. I and this I, is all opinion yeah, based. I mean, like you said, like earlier, talking about the opinionated shit. Like, yeah, could argue about this for an hour. But for I, sure. Like we, I said before. Like I, I think like they had Duke helped Zion. Zion helped Duke. Yes. I don't think like like one is maybe. I mean, you could argue that Zion helped Duke more. You could argue that Duke helped Zion more. Like he's yeah. saying, like the shoe contract. Like, like you know, you talk about Duke. Duke's arguably the you know, most popular do or college basketball program. If you so look most at the so- recognizable, yeah, like the social media, like Duke tweets it out every once in a while. They got like four or five million more Instagram followers than the next program. Yeah, you know, it's and that, that's game. prior to Zion Williamson. So, like, I think like the brand, but like you could argue it all day. For sure, he's not on TV as much if he plays for Clemson. He's not oh, on TV know. as much as if he goes out of high school. Like, I, I think. 
like I said, he could have went, and it's just because I'm biased. Like he could have went to Syracuse and done the same shit. Like they would they get second round of the tournament knocked out first round Baylor first knocked round out of Baylor. like they would have went two rounds three rounds if he was at Q's not that it was even an option for him he would have the same amount of TV time they probably if they if, if the networks knew he was committed to a school prior to like releasing their schedule they would have had more televised games like say it was Clemson who's not televised a lot he, I, like I mean I agree had, with that been. but I still don't think it's to the point where Duke is I'm not no I'm not arguing Clemson versus Duke I'm arguing mm-hmm. any top 10 to any, well, any top top ten, I'll argue against that any top 10 compared to Duke. Yeah, I agree with that. Also, right. we have to understand, we're talking about the exception, not the rule. We're talking about the anomaly. I mean, Zion Williamson is the most hyped NBA prospect since, if you want to say Kevin Durant, you can, but it's probably LeBron James in 2004. I mean, that's one player every 15 years. So we're talking about the exception not the rule i know you don't want to get into the bigger conversation yeah, about just not paying athletes one. and stuff yeah but zion is not normal <laughs> no <laughs> this is not not the rule by any means in most in essentially all cases the college brings much more value to the athlete than the athlete brings to the college fair enough i agree but with if that. you want like going off the kd thing like kd went to texas texas at the time was you know, maybe not even probably a top twenty-five program. Yeah. Before KD, and he so like the them. fact, yeah, but I'm saying like somebody fact check that. We that's what, dude. Deanna's supposed to be our fact checker. When she slacks hard. She's supposed to be out here. Well, right Texas now. was in the final four against Syracuse in 2003. KD was probably a rookie in 2007. Okay, yeah. So four years. Maybe I'm wrong. Final but I'm four saying like minimum. KD. I read an article that he wanted to go to North Carolina, but North Carolina had Raymond Felton coming back as a senior. Yeah. Right. He wanted to be the guy. And so he went yeah. to Texas. You know, that's what he was able to do. It sounds like uh, a lot like Kevin Durant now. Free well, agency this summer, he still wants to be He's the guy. He'll be a New York Nick. He'll be, yeah, he'll be a Nick. Him and Kyrie Irving, another dookie. They'll both be in New York. Yeah. Kawhi right. will be in fucking Los Angeles. I'll be a fan again. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for um, the first couple of weeks, man. Yeah, right. That's how it is every season. All right, let's 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 jump off these sports, <laughs> get a little, like, I guess deeper. So you can... You're so fucked up, dude. Damn. Um. All right. So, well, both of you guys, I guess we could say for all three of us, but I don't really want to answer. Do both of you guys consider you're in like good positions in your life? Like, do you consider yourself successful based on your own definition of successful? Like, how how do you say you guys are in life right now? Like, what position are you guys at? You happy I mean, like, with what's going on? I think I'm successful, look where I'm at now, but it's not my end goal. You know, I'm still in school and like. If you would have told me, like, you know, I got my associates, I got my bachelor's, and got my master's degree, like, I think that just right there, you know, that would be successful for a lot of people, but, like... Well, yeah, know. successful for a lot of people. I'm saying it's successful for you, based on your standard. I know a lot of people uh, have associates I would say are that I... Yeah, I'm successful, but, like... You happy I mean, with where you're at right now? Yeah, I'm happy where I'm at. Fair enough. Like, what about you? It's a tough question. I'd say I'm optimistic. Mm-hmm. Um... One of the things that I learned from my parents specifically is the idea of never being satisfied. And that is, to me, sort of a good mindset and also a troubling mindset. I uh, I think a lot of people, if I told them that they had a undergraduate degree and they were a couple of weeks away from graduating with a J.D., that they would be happy about that. Yeah. Like I said, I'm optimistic, but definitely not satisfied. Mm-hmm. Uh, too many unknowns for me to say at this point that it's successful. I hope that at one point I'll be able to say I'm satisfied, but I don't know. It's been instilled in me, and hopefully I'll get there. But for right now, I just I'm still ambitious. I think yeah, I think that's a great point just for life in general for anyone listening. Not that we're out here giving advice, but like never lose your drive like right like even if you're making whatever whatever you think is a good amount of money 100k 200k a mil whatever you're making it don't matter never lose your drive for wanting to do something more wanting to network with more people make more money money touch more leisure either exactly that's why i said it you could be making 30k if you're good with 30k you're good i don't care what you're making fulfillment you just you just asked if like i was happy where i'm at and exactly so like that's what i'm saying like like you say like money's not you know it's all about like your drive. It's all about your happiness and, you know, like, if you're Correct. happy what you're doing, then, like they say, like, if you're, whatever the saying is, like, if you're happy where you're at at work, you're, you're not working a day in your life, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Gonna... Um, actually, I, did, I wasn't trying to get into this, but we can quick, just based on these answers, I wasn't expecting. Um, Tyler Danielski was on here two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was, and um, he talked about um, basically 
he puts happiness over everything in his life. Yes. Like based on financials, his job, um, like any anything he does, if he's not happy, he doesn't do it. And he talked a lot about like he's an advocate for quitting your job if you're not happy at it. Are you guys also on that same wave? Because I, I strongly disagreed with it. Um, I, I agree with the general statement, but I don't agree with the the aspect of like no matter what what point of your life you're in, you, you could quit your job because you're not happy with it and find something else. Do you guys agree with that? Uh, I mean, I think it's hard. Like what you said, like like what you first said, I sort of agreed with like how you know happiness is you know. But like if you're like a 45 and you've been at your job and like I think that's a little different than he's what 24, 25, or whatever it is. Yeah. Like now this is the time that I think you can quit and you know you can try to like. But if you're older and you're not happy where you're at, I think it's a little harder than being a 25 year old. You know, yes. who doesn't have a set career path at the time. So the thing I tried to explain to him is there's like, there's, there's your happiness and then there's the fucking system. Like you're not gonna beat the system. There's ways around it. But at the end of the day, you don't need money to be happy, but you need money to live in this in, in this country. You do. You. I mean, there's people, there's homeless people, there's people. I understand all the other things that can happen, but end of the day, you need money to live here. Like, yeah. Me personally, if I'm making, you know, I don't know, you want to say a million dollars a year, and I'm not happy where I'm at, but I'm making a million dollars a year, then you know, what I'm saying I'm I'm good with that. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that. There's a balance. Yeah. There's a balance. And to Tyler's credit, he probably didn't mean under any circumstances, if you're unhappy, get the hell out of there. Right? I mean, if that's what he said, fine, but I think there's a balance. Yeah. Right. So like, for example, someone graduating graduate school, I'm gonna have some debt, right? <laughs> fuck yeah, you are. Yeah, well I don't you know, know I don't know your I don't know <laughs> your scholarships, <laughs> but fuck yeah you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have some debt. So if there's a job I have to take for three to five years, nice, dude. You all right? Don't call me out for spilling on myself. No, I mean, everyone's going to see that, but anyway. I'm cutting that, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> there, there's a balance. For So, like, if I have debt and I have to engage in some debt management for the first five years of my career and be relatively miserable for age 25 to 30, if that – provides me the opportunity to take a job afterward that's more fulfilling for the next 25 years sure that cost benefit is probably worth it it's just a balance um but i do think ultimately fulfillment and happiness is really important and that's pretty specific to our generation uh there's our generation the older generation is quite unhappy with our generation at least entering the workforce now Mm -hmm. the way that we value work-life balance things like that that's not how they had it they had the traditional hierarchy they had the traditional system to use the word that you used where they needed to go in they needed to work and earn everything that they had uh our generation doesn't take too kindly to that we want work-life values work-life balance (laughs) We, we value happiness um and that's a little bit different than the way things have been but yeah, I, I agree with what you say. Yeah, that fulfillment's a bit more important. But there are circumstances that require you to stick it out. And Possibly it means do something to you're an not end. happy with. Yeah, it's for a, a short period of time, or for sure, a duration of time, or whatever the duration is. Yeah. Exactly. Um. All right, kind of stay on that same wave. Um. I guess kind of the same wave. I might just be stretching this. Um. <laughs> is there things that kind of no, you're good. Cook will answer and then we'll wait. Um, is there, yeah, no problem. Uh, is there things that happen, Cook? This is just you throughout your life, and I don't mean I, I mean like real shit. And if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. But is there like anything that like made you that happened in your life that like changed you or your perception on like anything or made you happy or sad or like destroyed you? Is there anything? Like, if you don't want to talk about it, I'll cut it out. But like, no, is there anything like, that you know, like we were, you you know we had dinner last night like with my family and then, yeah. like my sister and my mom were going like over the questions you you know the what we were gonna you know talk about a little bit during the podcast yeah and like this question came up and I, my mom was like like do you have you know anything like like for this question and I was like you know like I thought about it and I was like you know I don't know and she's like you know what about Bobby T and you know I think you probably know the situation yeah. and you know um, how that whole deal down and I I went to her and I was like I, I like I thought like I was pretty young at the time but then like the more I thought about it and like the more I thought about the day of it and it brought back you know like mm-hmm. I guess like you know 
maybe it didn't personally change my life, but I think it changed a lot of my family members, and, you know, I, and that obviously grows into me, like, you know. It's directly related to your life. Well, yeah, right? the whole accident, the situation, it's just, you know, with the blink of an eye, you know, he's gone, and it's, I was 14 at the time. Just to, for, just to cut you off, for anyone that's listening, can you explain who Bobby T is? Yeah, Bobby T is my, you know, my first cousin, um, my aunt's son, yeah. oldest son. Uh, when he was 22, you know, he got in an accident on a motorcycle, and, yeah, you know, he ended up passing. And, you know, it's a day that I know my family, and especially my aunt and uncle and my cousins who are brother and sister of him, that, you know, they, there's not a day that goes by that they don't remember it or don't think about it. And, yeah. You know, I think, like, you sort of get lost in the translation of what happened, like, because, you know, you're going about life every day, but sometimes, like, there's that one thing that, you're like, you know, that reminds you of it or... And you're like, and you know, it brings you back to that, you know, that dark time as a family. But I think the big thing is like a, it's not like saying this in a bad way or anything, but like, you know, it brought our family a lot closer. Like, you know, you, yeah. you the next time you hug, you, you know, your grandma or your mom, it you know, a it's a lot more. tighter. You yep. know, it's, it's definitely a life changing moment that, you know, that definitely changed my life at the time. Yeah. Just to, uh, kind of keep following up on that, uh. I don't want to sway your words, but the way you said it, and this could be true, so I just want to ask, you said, like, not to bring up a dark time. Um, do you do you guys, do your family, or just maybe speaking for yourself, not to speak for someone else, do you consider that a dark time? Because, like, obviously someone passing away, yes, that it has negative aspects, but, like, do you look at the positives, or, or do you really consider that a dark time? Like, do you think about all the times, like, maybe you've hung out with, I mean, I know it was different ages, but, like, yeah, is no. it a really a dark time? I don't. I maybe you know dark times not the correct, term, correct yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. Her term, but like, I think it does. It, it's definitely a change in your life where you, you know you like I said like it. It just changes your mentality and like you know you mm-hmm. you see those family members and you know you, it's a lot. It's a closer bond and like because because of what happened. And yeah. How it went down and that feeling you had that day like, you know. You still know what it felt like, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. But but you kind of say like you appreciate people and some things a lot more than you used to. Like a hundred percent, like yeah. Like you know, like I said, like I I truly do believe that it brought like our family a whole lot closer. You know, obviously you're close with your family and everything, but that like you know, it's just that you know that day and that time like and you know even like years now like you know. You know, holidays are a little different. Yeah, and it's just it just. You know, obviously you adapt to the situation and what happened and everything, but, like, it's still definitely something in my life that's, you know, affected me. and yeah, no. Good and bad, you know. Obviously, like, you know, like you just said, like, the positives. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more positives now about it, but, like, at the time, you know, it's, you're, it's damn, you know. Yeah. I think, um, and not speaking on your family, so if any of them are listening, this has nothing to do with them, just in general. Um, I think it's kind of sad that sometimes, and even for me, because, like, I'm close to my mom and, like, some relatives, but I don't really do as much as I should or yeah, talk to them as much I, as I should. I, I know I sort of know where you're going with yeah. that. Like, it's, it sucks that it might take you to something like that. It has to happen yeah, for to, you to realize for that, how much you appreciate for it. That, yeah, exactly. That, and, and, it's, and like I said, if anyone from Cook's family or any family that's had, like, someone pass away is listening, I'm not trying to say, like, that's a negative thing. I just – it really does, like – it makes me, just hearing it right now out loud – think about a little more like it it does suck that something tragic sometimes has to happen to make you realize you need to appreciate things a little more and like i said that's a general statement i apologize if i'm offending anyone i'm not trying to um eichner he just took a piss so uh he got back and we're out here depressed (laughs) Uh, (laughs) i know what you're talking about yeah the vibe affected a lot more people than jeff chef's family too i remember exactly yeah i don't want to step on any toes but um so my question that i asked him um is there anything that happened in your life or maybe just happened or is happening that kind of like changed you in a major way? And I don't mean anything like, like cookie cutter. I really mean like, like deep. And if you don't want to get into it, I'll cut it. But like, is there anything that like, like maybe a divorce or a death, like anything is it like that really like it changed the way you just go about yourself? It's an interesting question. I think maybe I'm lucky cause I can't point to any very specific events that have been traumatic or yeah. life changing things like that um I, my parents separated when i was really young so young to the point that i don't know anything different and i'm not sure that that shaped me too much to this point maybe 
if I'm older and married and have children, that will change the way I approach those situations because yeah. I know what kind of impact certain things had on me. Um, but just generally from a maturation perspective, um, I didn't go very far away to college, but I went far enough away uh, to a university where people are diverse enough where I learned a lot from other people. I've spent some time away from home as far as internships and summers are concerned. Um, and just diversity of thought and things like that have changed me a bit. Yeah. Um, but any significant event that I can put my finger on that almost represented turning a corner in my life? Yeah. Not so much. I mean, that's not a bad thing, honestly. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. not. It's really not bad at all. Um, so... I guess kind of staying on the same subject. Um, maybe not. Depends how you guys answer. Is there, um, and we're, we're getting towards the end here. So is there anything, um, it'll probably be really hard to say on a podcast, but is there anything you guys don't really say out loud or like don't say often that like you want to say or like, like you wish like people knew it about you or it's a very generic question, but like, like for me, like it was like, five episodes four episodes ago like talking about like my parents divorce is there anything and it's not the same question but is there anything like you don't say a lot that you just wish people knew like you had kind of in your mind sort of thing do you understand the question or you need me to i understand like, but like i don't have anything off the top of my head i mean i don't know if he does but like i probably have to think about it a little bit like i'll change the question a little bit works for me. it's not anything that i care whether other people know about <laughs> yeah, it's something yeah. that maybe other people don't know yeah um we spoke a little about it earlier about the way that we can be perceived or let yeah. people think about us. Yep. I probably think about that way more than I should. Really? Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. It's kind of a trait with my family as well. We almost get more about the satisfaction of other people than our own satisfaction, right? So I think in some ways I'm a little bit too conscious of the way that other people feel or the way that other people think or the way that I personally make other people feel which is i think probably ironic to you oh <laughs> Be- definitely ironic yeah we ain't got enough time left in this to yeah, get yeah. That. <laughs> exactly but no that's that's a trait that i have that that just exists that probably most people wouldn't assume that's yeah that's true i answered this question i think on logan's episode um the fournier's um where i was like what is something like people think about you that you don't want them to think so it, mine was more on like i i care how people feel sort of thing yeah um it was the same answer though like I kind of, I do care how people perceive me, but not because, like, I don't want to look, like, a certain way, because I want people to know that I have more knowledge than they believe. So, like, so I say a lot mm. of dumb shit just speaking, <laughs> but, like, like in well, this podcast, I said... Isn't that the next question? I don't know. Why, the next question, head? I believe, is what about you bugs us? <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> um not, yeah we'll we'll get there in a sec yeah we can we can we can fucking go right into that but um yeah not I, I don't really care how people perceive me but i care no i guess i guess yeah i'm contradicting myself i care how people perceive me because i don't want them to think that i'm naive or ignorant yeah. like when i say something it will come across arrogant or ignorant like I don't, I don't think before i speak but i do understand how the things i say or do affect people like I'm not just a dumb motherfucker. Okay, you know like, I mean? So do you say something and then like after you're like, all right, maybe I should yes, have said that. Yes, exactly. And that's a big flaw of mine. But like, yes, I, I've, I've said things in the past way worse than I do now that I'm like, like I knew what I wanted to say. Yeah. But I was like, Sometimes fuck, just that's come not way, yeah. exactly. And that's that's the that's the kind of thing I do care about, quote unquote. I hear you. But I'm um, yeah, to get in the question. I guess you've been waiting for this one. It looks like <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what's um, what's and this is another like selfish question just for me for hosting. What, what's something I do? That either like pisses you guys off or bugs you or like like you think I shouldn't do or like you know what I mean. Oh, you just you know what you do. You instigate, you antagonize. You're the you're the dude who just like you'll light a match, throw it behind you, and just walk away and watch the building burn. Like you'll come Jeff and I'll have five more beers while we're sitting here after this podcast is over, and you'll bring up a topic that you know pisses both of us off and just watch <laughs> us both go at it. But does that off. that pisses you off? That's- no, I think it's funny. But, I mean, to a degree, at some point, it can be unsettling. Fair enough. What about you, Cook? Uh, I guess going back to, like, the ignorant, like, like what you said, like, you what you people perceive you as. And I feel like I, I mean, I've obviously known you a little closer and more than 
Eichner has here. But, like, I don't have any specifics, like, so don't ask Scenarios, me yeah. But, yeah. like, sometimes, like, you say something, I'm like, like, damn, like, that's sort of fucked up. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, I know yeah. what you mean. obviously, like, I know, not that, like, that you're kidding, but, like, I know, like, that's the type of person, like, I know you a lot better than other yeah. people. Like, I know your intention is, like, better than it may come out. Like, we just were talking. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, I know you're... Intention is better than what it may sound at the time. Like, so, just for another quick generic statement that'll probably piss people off. Do you think that's a flaw of mine or a flaw of society? The way uh, people take oh, things. And I don't want to get into a both. crazy conversation. Yeah. But, like, yeah. the way you say something, the way someone takes it, are always up for interpretation. So, is that really a flaw of mine that I say what I think and it doesn't come across right? Like, should I have to spell check and make sure what I'm saying is cookie cutter by the fucking books? Or should people fucking look into it and be like, you know what? He's not. He's not trying to say that. He's trying to say this. Like, whose flaw is that? For both of you guys, it's a question of whether or not you care. I, and I do. I was, you just said you do. So I, I, I don't care that I do it. I care on how people take it. But I'm not. It's not enough for me to second second guess it. And all right, let me make sure this. Uh, should I change this word to this word? But I do care. Actually, you know what I what I care about is how the people don't look into it. I'm gonna say something there and be like. Wow, Mace, that was yeah. fucked up. You're an glance, asshole. Yeah, okay, yeah. How about you take a second, read it, understand who I am as a person, and be like, yeah. all right, you know what? That's what that was. Instead of just reading it fucking off the top and being like, nah, he's a piece of shit. I'm going to fucking retweet this and get a million re Like, Nah. Why don't you look into it? Why don't you fact check? Why don't you try to understand where I'm coming from rather than just reading the words on a page and taking it for what it's worth? Right. So to me, it sounds like you're pretty adamant. About most of the things you say. Yeah. You can justify it to yourself. So then it doesn't sound like your problem. But it, but it Maybe is you should because because a big thing of mine, and a lot of people know what I've said on here, is is um I like to interact with people. I, like That's why I do this. I, I like conversation. Yeah. And, like, I'll bring someone on here that, like, it could be my mortal enemy. Not that I have any. Like, not that I have any. But, like, I I will take the time to understand someone or where they're coming from. And I don't think other people do. So, like... It's not like, oh, they don't, but I know what I'm saying, so fuck it. Like, I care what people think, because one day you might need that person. Or one day, like, they might help you get to, you know, and you kind of get what I'm saying? I do. I think there's ways you can be more selective about mm -hmm. whose opinion you care about, right? Yeah. So yeah. the scenario you're describing is a little bit extreme in the idea that someone's going to write you off or think poorly of you. Burning bridges, yeah. Well, no, no, no. That someone's going to think poorly of you based on one statement with no context, no background information, yeah. nothing that's relevant. Yes. So if that's somebody's – if that's a characteristic of somebody who's reading whatever you say or listening to whatever you say, then it's probably not worth your time. I feel I feel that. And I actually I agree with that. So no, that's dope. Um, Jesus Christ. Drinking game. Easter, Jesus Christ, bro. Skipping it's that. It's almost back. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. Getting to the Easter back. Um, all right, two more questions, I think. Um, actually, one. Um, so, what, and we're wrapping this up. So, what's, what's your guys' like opinion on this whole thing? And I want you guys to be straight, like real with me. Like, I don't care what you say. Like, so for me, running a podcast. Um, <clears throat> what's your opinion is on like being here, the production, the setup? Um, is it worth it? Is it relevant? Like, do you think it's just funny? Like, haha. Like, what's your whole opinion on the whole thing? Not just being here, but just me doing it in general. For both of you guys. Oh well, I think first of all, everything's very comfortable. We all know each other well. Yeah. I think the podcasts that I listen to, the ones that are most well received, are just normal conversational podcasts, and yeah. that's what you try to do. So I think that that's good. We spoke about it a little bit earlier. Before yep. we started recording, the thing that only suggestion that I would have is that to make maybe not necessarily the whole podcast geared toward one particular topic, but maybe a couple episodes or a series of episodes that are grouped together that cover one specific area that might attract more repeat listeners. Yeah. That like if you get this one topic they like, they listen to those three episodes, they might be more prone to listen to the next series of episodes but we discussed that you had a good counter argument so that might not be relevant yeah. generally the experience was good fun comfortable and i'm glad you asked us to do it we appreciate it cook what about you my big thing is i've been texting you like not 
not necessarily joking or but like, hey, like when when's my episode and stuff. Yeah. So like when you texted me like you know I was coming home this weekend and you're like, hey, you want to like do it? And I'm like, I wasn't like hesitant, but then you're like, yo, I'm gonna have you and Eichner. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I did that for I, you. I well, I'll just say you. like, uh, like I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It was a lot easier because you know like like he said like the conversation is just it's literally like we're not. We're not recording like this is the conversations like we would have. Yeah, exactly. Like, mm-hmm. You know, maybe a little more dialogue, like you know, but like the hospitality and the environment, it, it's good all around. Did you think, um, just real quick, do you guys think is it different than you thought it would be? Like as far as like the setup, is it like like the lights? The, like is it is it different than you thought it would happen when you came up here? No, after watching the episodes and stuff, like this is the vibe I got. But like I think the big thing, <laughs> the big the big thing is that like. Uh, the comfort, like the, you know, the, how easy it is. And I think that's a big thing that, uh, yeah, that like, it's so easy and it's just a conversation rather than like, you know, not being able what to say or what to do or be hesitant and on what you're going to say, how you're going to answer. And it's just very easy going, which is like, which helped the conversation flow and helped me. Like I talked about being assertive earlier and I'm not that type of person, but this was very comforting and it was very easy for me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I watched uh, an episode before, especially the YouTube version, so I knew what to expect, and it's exactly what I expected. Um, Jeff and I, actually, before you were up here, were talking about, like, the nature of podcasts and why Mm -hmm. people like them, and uh, kind of the idea is that you can listen to a podcast and do, like, at least one other thing while you're listening, Um, and I think that's good when you do podcasts in long form, conversational like this. It doesn't necessarily require all of your focus like TV. Yeah, like if this was a TV show, pretty boring. Yep, but it's a podcast, and people can drive, people can work out, people mow the lawn, whatever yeah. the hell you have to do while you're listening. Um, I think that's an attribute that this podcast caters too well. And, and that's kind of why I chose a podcast. Is um, first of all, so the listeners can do other shit while they listen, and then also like, because I think like like I said, I don't know if you guys listen to everything, all my episodes, but um, excuse me, I think uh. Jeez, excuse me. I think like conversation is the best way to like learn. I, Jesus, I'm drinking. I'm burping. Um, <laughs> so that, that's kind of why. Drinking. He's drinking spiked seltzers. They're so. not seltzers. Get the fuck out of here. They're Arnold Palmer's, oh, dude. Spiked Arnold Palmer. Spiked, yeah, and they're good. Um, I think they gotta pay for that advertisement too. Yeah, yeah, no yo, we should hit him up. Maybe that's your first sponsor. Get the fuck. <laughs> you were playing wish. golf earlier. You're a scratch golfer now, bro. You're I'm, Arnold yeah, Palmer. True. Yep. Striping him. <laughs> Striping um, him, that's right. <laughs> Stripe show. But no, I, I wish I mean not I wish. I think I think um talking is some of the best like ways for people to learn and for myself to learn. I, I like having kind of like like earlier I asked you like the definition of a word. What was it, civic or something? Like yeah, le- like I didn't know it and I wanted to like I, I'm out in the open, like I admitted it, like my vocabulary, like, like I, I want to improve things. Like I like talking to someone with more knowledge than me because now I'm gonna take that word, I'll, I'll use it someday in the future. Like I will, like that's how I am. So, like, that's another reason I did a podcast. Like, we're, not, we're on our phones a little bit. There's TV on. But we're literally just shooting the shit, talking. And, like, I enjoy that. So yep. I thought that was a big thing for, like, running a podcast. Yeah, totally agree. I think that's uh, something the audience can relate to and mm-hmm. the reason why you've been successful to this point. Word. Um, all right, we're about to go to the bar and <laughs> get wasted, I'm yeah. assuming. So, <laughs> so um, all right, let me wrap this assumption. up. Um, I appreciate you guys coming, first off. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we appreciate no you. No problem, bro. no problem. Um, this has been the real bar. You can find us on Spotify. iTunes is still fucking me. Um, YouTube, <laughs> SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, a bunch of places. Obviously, it'll be tweeted, Instagrammed. Um, it'll be out there. The link will be out there. I'm not sure what episode this is. Like I said, but um, I appreciate everyone listening and any new listeners, welcome. And uh, I hope you guys have a good week. This has been the Real Bar Podcast. Talk to you guys later. Peace.